a common thing. Ca can on you the hear me now? Of Abuja, Lagos, and other major cities. It is even worse in other states where consumers have resigned to their fates and are at the mercies of marketers and middlemen that exploit them through outrageous pricing of products at full station. Joining me live on the last lap of the program of our conversation from our Lagos studio is the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Prince Adewoli Adebayo. Thank you for staying with us. Okay, I can hear them now. Yes. I know I've listened to you severally talking about this sector and a lot of people will say we don't have any business, you know, having this perennial crisis in the fuel sector. What do you think is responsible for this, you know, crisis? Well, the discussion about the energy sector, the, especially the petroleum subsector of the energy mix, it depends on who is talking about it because there are many players there. If you are looking at it as a public in, um, priority, like a national security priority, that you must have sufficient supply of um, petroleum products to run your economy, then it's a, you start from the government side. If you are looking at it as a market, that this is just a demand and supply a situation in the market, then you want to go purely into the economics of petroleum uh, industry all over the world, which means that you have to ignore the fact that Nigeria has crude. You have to say, okay, assuming we don't have any crude, we are linked to the international uh, petroleum um, market. So do we import? And if we are going to import, how do we pay for the import? Or do we refine locally? If you are going to refine locally, you have located some cost uh, to the Naira outside the dollar. So you would probably want to deal with, okay, how do you get the crude into the country? When you refine, how do you distribute in the country? Those are the questions you have to answer no matter which country you are on this planet, no matter your geological record, no matter the abundance or lack of it of oil in your economy. You must be able to answer these safety questions. How do you get distribution into your country? And that is the question that Nigeria is struggling to answer. I think in the First Republic and uh, during the military, we answer them from a public sector point of view, which is that it is the responsibility of the government to keep the economy running, and you need petroleum products to keep the economy running. So it's a national security issue, and government went into the sector by creating these four refineries. Uh, so if we pursue that, then the question will come, how come we could not maintain the refineries? How come we could not build more when the population enlarged? How come we could not refarm the pipeline and the storage infrastructure? How come we are bridging, which was meant to be a temporary answer to some problems with the pipeline? How come bridging became a permanent feature? And now we are having tankers running all over the country. And how come now we even have almost next to nothing in refining capacity and we have to import? And because we are import, it's now impacting our public finance. And how do we now come into it? So it's a question. And, and um, it's not okay. it depends on the ideology of the leader. My own mm -hmm. ideology is that we should continue to treat it as a national security priority. Just like United States is treating it, Russia is treating it, uh, United Kingdom is treating it. And if you treat it that way, then you know that it's the responsibility of government, whether using market, market rules or using policy tools to ensure that electricity is available reliably, is delivered safely to the nearest uh, pump, and that it is not busting the budget. So and many years now, budget, we've been saying that if the refinery, if Dangote refinery, can you hear me, Mr. Adewale? Budget, Prince Adewale? How much of your uh, income can you hear me? You need to spend uh, to, for transportation. Yes, we've been saying it from time to time that 
look, with the coming of the Dangote refinery into play, for several years now, we've been saying that if the Dangote refinery should start, you know, um, production, if they, you know, are now coming integrated in the market, that things are going to get better. But from the look of things, with the complaint from even Dangote himself, it shows that the problem in this industry is so complex, more complex than what the, the way you wish to view it. I thought somebody like me, I thought with the 650 barrel per day, with Dangote coming into you know, play, that the problem of that sector will be solved. Or partly solved. No, you see, the problem with our politics is that we are equating a, a, an industry with a firm. Dangote is one company, with one refinery, out of many. So the fortune of a country cannot rest with one company, unless you are doing pre prependalism or you are doing crony capitalism. If you are doing proper uh, economic planning, the refinery uh, that uh, Dangote Industries is bringing will just be one of the things you are adding to your energy supply chain. Even if the refinery was working, which I'm not even sure is completed yet, but assuming it was working, it will still give you other logistical requirements. Because the refinery is at the corner of Nigeria in Lagos. So you still have to get it to Shokoto, Sanfara, Obubra, uh, um, Benue, Mubi, wherever. So the problems we have with transportation and logistics within the country, the absence of rail lines and all of that will still impact on it. So the way I would look at it as a as a policy leader is to give as much encouragement to a Dangote Industries, but not peculiar to him, to make a general rule for the entire industry, not fashioning policies and programs to fit one particular company, to make a general rule to, that will support the establishment of refineries in Nigeria, using clearly laid policies that anybody who wants to go into that industry will have equal rights like any other person. And I will not politicize what a private company's business because what we must run away from in Nigeria is that you must not privatize the profit and socialize the loss. That is to, make, you see to say the cost centers are given to the taxpayer. And then the profit is given to the uh, private player. So what you want to do is to make sure first, before you go and mention a Dangote refinery, which I believe, for my knowledge of the law, does not exist in law yet. Because what I, for my last check of the regulatory um, position, they only had a permit to construct. And I don't think that they've gone back to the re regulator to say, we are finished constructing. Come and inspect us. We now need a license to operate. So they are still in the construction phase. So any political um, celebration that was done, commissioning and a lot of that, I think they were done uh, uh, from the political point of view to give cred credence to the government that they were doing some investment in that regard. But in terms of operational readiness, you have to give its own lead time, unconnected with political agenda. So, and I believe that they still have several months before they can come out of the woods and say that they are operational. So don't count on that. The next question would be, what happened to the four refineries that are owned by the public? I wanted to ask you that. Three of which have been undergoing turn three of which have been undergoing turn around maintenance for years. I was a young boy. Yes, yeah, so how come, what is happening? So it's, it's possible that Potako Refinery or Wari Refinery may even be, may even have more prospect of coming as, or stream before any other private uh, one comes on stream. So to have a conversation on this, you need more time. But what I can say is that the energy mix should be done in such a way 
that the fortune of the whole country is not dependent on what a private entity does. The only role of the government is to make its policy stable so that many players can come into the sector the government and continue construct to run these refineries. Yeah, government will have to continue to run everything, but there are many methods that governments use all over the world to run their assets. Because they've been talking For about example, concessioning these refineries to private um, interests. You can concession the operating and maintenance. I, I am, my own political philosophy does not permit me to allow you to wholesale carry what belongs to the public and give to uh, uh, private people. Because our experience with privatization, results. As you give it to the entity, they do asset stripping and make money out of the easy um, um, uh, assets that they have there, the more liquid assets, the low-hanging fruit, they take all of those, and then they abandon the rest virtually. So that is not good. So we need to change that model. But government maintains doesn't mean that kill the commonwealth of the country and give to you, private people. Because on many occasions from my reading and study of our privatization efforts, many of the people they sold these assets to did not even have as much experience as even the public sector people they were taking over from. That's why many of these discos can perform well. That's why many of these private companies can perform well. That's why many of the factories and all those other manufacturing plants that we privatized, they just sold all the assets and ran away with the money. They, they're not able to continue or improve. So we need to understand that we need to bring our best 11, our best people into the public sector. The most intelligent, loving, patriotic person to be the leader. And okay. if you recruit similar people like him, that way we can run the public sector more efficiently. Let's talk about government grappling to sustain the present, uh, the, uh, the present um, prices. Now, while some are selling it for 500 and night something in Lagos and in Abuja here, you have 600 and something. In other parts of the country, they sell it 1,000. But we gather that the landing cost exactly is over 1,000 naira, 1,300 naira, 1,400 naira. And government is telling us that, look, that the subsidy regime is over. And NNPC, with the, their profits, you know, they are grappling to still make sure that Nigerians will still buy it at this subsidized rate. Why can't government just leave this landing cost and just allow, it, since the government is saying that they've removed subsidy, it's over 1,400 naira landing cost right now. It's a structural problem. You see, there are, it's a two-dimensional problem, and a one-dimensional analysis will not get it. When you look at the price of petrol, you are looking at two problems there. One, the, the logistic cost of landing one liter and the arbitrage in the pricing of the Naira. So that's why, you, well, that's why the price went haywire. The government created structural problems in that all they needed to do was to focus on how to get the supply. And the two ways you can get the supply is to either import, which is what they are doing now, but import the most efficient and transparent way so that all the corruption associated with importation and over-invoicing and all of that will be a thing of the past. And then to put a, a lead time and say, we will import for the next 24 months, 48 months, and definitely, we will stop importation six months after the refineries have been reliably able, uh, shown that they can supply us. That way, you will have no problem. But to try to control the price on the street, when the demand is growing, but the supply is shrinking, it, you are just going to be disappointing people. Subsidy cannot go away. The subsidy can be hiding from one subhead to another. So what the present government has done is to move the subsidy finance outside the budget. So they will not appropriate money for it again in the budget. Mm. But you will see that 
the dividends which the NNPC is supposed to pay to the Federation account, mm. it will use that dividends now to fund the subsidy. Because if you don't subsidize, the economy will collapse. So I am not one of those who support so we must pay, of subsidy. We must no. continue to pay this subsidy. You must continue because of the fact that you have created a structural problem. And the structural problem you created is that, one, over time, we refuse to take a large chunk of our population from the use of petrol to do transportation. We didn't do investment in rail lines. We didn't do investment in, uh, uh, in uh, maritime highways. We didn't invest in public transportation using CNG and all of that so that majority of people will have no reason to drive. I came from Ikoyi now to your studios. If there was a bus reliably coming from Ikoyi to your place, I will, I will not drive. I will just jump into the bus because that was all I would have done in London or New York. So you need to do that. Second, you need to make sure that the refineries are not, are not dead woods. They are not just call centers that are not performing. So you need to make sure that the turnaround management is done and the racket that have been created around it where every government comes and um, spends money on it, that comes to an end. Then you will now start to expect that the private sector would also invest in refinery. The only problem that I see there as a, um, as a petroleum industry advisor is that the people who build refineries, their cost is international. And the currency is weak. So they, will, they, they are trying to work towards a minimum price guarantee before they can sell in our domestic market. This is where the uh, last administration, President Buhari, was trying to manage a situation whereby they will merge the market to the industries. So they will prep the market by raising the price already so that when they start producing, then the price already high enough that government doesn't have to do domestic subsidies. So if, if, you, have, if, if you stop importing, any private sector that is going to supply refined uh, supply refine products into the Nigerian market will still have to bear the international cost. So, and if the international cost is above the sale price, somebody has to make the intervention. So unless they work in, in such a way that the, world, the, the export price is higher than the local price, and then they can now bridge it by some incentive uh, whatsoever. But the key to having a good and reliable uh, petroleum price is to have stability of the Naira and the stability of supply. And this can be done if the government is efficient, they are actually going to solve that problem, and they are not trying to capitalize on the problem to make money for themselves or their cronies. But if it is to solve that problem, it can be solved, but it needs lead time. You need to have a four-year, five-year program where you are communicating well to the people because the timeline is an engineering timeline. To build a refinery, you can bring the president, bring a, a heads of state from overseas and play music. That's not going to make the catalytic cracker to work if you haven't brought into the country or you haven't done it very well. You can make announcements and say the Potaco refinery is going to be done in six months. If there's an engineering issue that you have not dealt with, you have to go back to the public and apologize. So let the engineering plan be there. Make for all, for all the redundancies and inefficiencies and then add one year more and communicate to the public that by the year 2028, we will be able to be uh, energy sufficient domestically. And give them the reason. So and so refineries will be in order by that time. And then what you can now do is how do we now efficiently manage the subsidy? Because we must cap the price of petroleum if we really want to deal with factor costs and fight poverty. We cannot let it be running away. Because but if it runs it away, every other cost will run away. And neighboring, um, uh, neighboring countries, Cameroon, um, Niger, no. Chad, and if 
the the amount we still buy it in Nigeria is still far cheaper from what uh, what they are selling it in uh, uh, countries around us. So the federal government is still kind is of it, bearing the brunt. We are subsidizing for these countries. No, you see, the argument they are making doesn't make sense for two reasons. One, the entire consumption in our neighboring country is not up to the consumption in Ibadan alone. So technically speaking, 15% uh, um, export of this should not, should not break the bank for you. Secondly, petroleum is so feasible that unless you let them go, they cannot go. And I know at least out of the borders in Nigeria, I know 21 of them. How many of the borders are so motorable that you can carry uh, a petroleum tanker and travel at 80 kilometers per hour? Is it towards Garoa? Is it towards uh, Duroko? Is it towards um, uh, any of the borders? No. It, you, you can man your border with just simple area surveillance. If you put drones or around the border, you can spot them. And you can tag every tanker in Nigeria so that you can locate everybody who has a tanker can have a tag put on the tanker. And the tag will be put together in one location. So we can know which truck has traveled to where. So even if, I don't, even if the man on duty is colluding with you, by the time I start to do the audit of your movement, I will find out that you have traveled outside Nigeria with our uh, vehicle. So there are many things we can do. So I don't want us to, to sound uh, unserious by saying that uh, our neighbors, no, they cannot fly over here and siphon with the petrol with a straw. The typically, licensed people load from our depot and travel these distances, and they can be stopped. But I know that government is using that as an excuse to raise the price because the government doesn't want to have a firm conversation with the people to show that they have had a lot of inefficiencies and they need to be serious about it. And the Minister of Petroleum is the president. So he cannot say he's sleeping on duty. So I, I think we need to be more serious than this. The, there is no reason to make that kind of argument. That argument is laughable uh, with all due respect. Okay, uh, CNG Petroleum now, how can we strike a balance? The federal government, they're trying to make sure that we have so many cars on this um, uh, compressed natural gas so that it will reduce the pressure from the uh, petroleum industry considerably. If, if you look at our national gas policy, our national gas policy, if we implement it, liquefied natural gas, compressed natural gas, all kinds of ways by which we can utilize gas. They are all there. What the government needs to do is to create a gas market that has incentives. To have converters put on cars, they've been mounting this for a long time. You can first clearly make it an automotive policy that every vehicle that you want to have in Nigeria must be capable of using petrol and gas alternately. You, if you go to Kenya, you go to uh, Tanzania, you go to many places, even Ghana, uh, they, they, they have it. Even in Nigeria, we have it at microscopic level. So you can deal with that. You can have all these plants that they will generate employment. So you do the conversion. But you still have to supply the gas. And all these gas fields that we have, if you look at even the West African gas pipeline, I've had occasions to deal with NGC on, that, on, on them. You will see that sometimes the pipeline is shut down, Supply, sometimes we cannot, if you look at the GSP, the gas sales and, so, and purchase agreement that we signed, on many occasions we declare, we declare force major and all of that. But if we take care of that sector uh, effectively, we can use CNG, we can have a three-year plan where at least we have 50% um, consumption of CNG, 50%. That will reduce um, the, the rely, re reliance on petrol. Secondly, we need to invest in public transportation. Nigeria has not reached a level where every man and woman will have to have a car. It's not it's difficult to do. So it is, it's easier to set up factories, whether in collaboration with partners in Asia or Europe, anywhere, or Brazil. You set up plants here. By the time you produce 
50,000, 100,000 um, public buses that are on CNG. Some of them are electric. You can do it. And it's not, it's not rocket science. But there must be a, a national program that is devoted to that, that is not just a political program, a palliative within a campaign season. That's actually a national program. But by the time we do it, it uh, we, can, we can deal with the issue. All right. And we can reduce petroleum consum uh, petrol consumption in Nigeria by at least 75% in the life of one administration. It is doable. Okay, we have to leave it there. I want to thank you, Prince Adewoli Adebayo, the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party in the 2023 election. I want to thank you for your intervention. Thank you. Thank you so much. And God bless mm -hmm. Nigeria. And that's our package for the program this week. You can see this episode again on TVC News on YouTube channel. And also, you watch our repeat broadcast tonight at 11 p.m. on Sunday. Thank you for watching us. I'm Ayo Dili Uzumako. See you next week. And God bless Nigeria. <laughs>